Boris Johnson was campaigning in Wales, giving some sheep a light trim, and then serving up lamb rolls. He was here for the launch of the Conservatives' Welsh manifesto. There you go, potential. Cymru, there you go. Wales's first minister, Mark Drakeford, was launching Labour's Welsh manifesto. Both sides fighting over seats that could be critical to the election result. Boris Johnson is targeting a red wall of Labour-held seats in this election, stretching from the North Sea to North East Wales. And there he has his eye fixed on five Labour-held marginals. Dotted amongst the beauty spots round here, many towns that voted heavily for Brexit and can match the statistics and disappointments that made many English towns vote for Brexit too. Some strategists think Welsh Labour could be in danger of losing all its seats in Wales north of Merthyr Tydfil, though one poll out tonight suggests Labour is mounting a recovery. Labour's been winning Wrexham since 1935, but the party's hold on the seat has been slipping. The town voted 60-40 for Brexit, an issue Boris Johnson hopes will do for him what council house sales did for Margaret Thatcher, unlocking some new voters from the other party's embrace. Boris is the man to get us out. He's the only, he's the only one putting his cards on the table, putting his neck on the block. Let's get behind Boris and let's get out. You get a lot of customers here. Do you think that's the general mood? Is it going that way? Yes, I think so. If I had to call it now, you'd say, yeah, you'd say Labour. Yeah, uh, but I would. And I would and I'm on the border. You're hovering. Mm -hmm. Could you bring yourself to vote Tory? Maybe. I did vote to leave. And that's swung you to vote for Boris Johnson yes, this time, yeah, even though you don't normally vote Tory? That's it, yeah, yeah. Have you surprised yourself a bit? I have in a way, yes, because I always... Does that make you a Tory? Not particularly, no. <laughs> Might not do it again, no. but you're doing it this time. Yes, yes. Would you wake up more relaxed if it was Jeremy Corbyn Prime Minister on the 13th of December or Boris Johnson? I think equally frantic as yeah. the, as the would equally, be my... Yes. Equally frantic, not yeah. relaxed. Uh, yeah. I don't know. We, I, we really don't. Politics has never been so confused or so messed up. You're both up. traditionally Labour, but you just don't know where to go this time. Yes, I think I would agree with that. Yes. Yeah. 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 In Derbyshire, Jeremy Corbyn was thanked by WASPy campaigners who've been demanding compensation for the lost years of state pension they suffered after their pension age was suddenly moved up. How much do each of you think you've lost know, as a result? How much is yours? 24,000. In Wrexham, Waspy campaigners were grateful, but not falling at Labour's feet. All of a sudden it's come out that they're going to do this and do that, and you're just sceptical about... You're a bit suspicious about the speed about of this. Spe yes, yeah. I need some help from somewhere, and if Labour are stepping up to the table, well, at the moment they've got my vote. Would, would they have had it the day before they made this announcement, necessarily? Not completely, not completely. You were wavering? I was wavering, yeah. Some cynics might think Labour were hoping they might have bought your vote with this. Well, they can think all they like, but even with this carrot that the Labour Party has put in front of us now, it still absolutely hasn't swayed me one way or the other. So I'm still up in the air. Labour needs to start firming up waverers soon in seats like this. The deadline for registering to vote is tomorrow. Postal votes start arriving on doormats next week. The Liberal Democrats have accused the Prime Minister of being authoritarian and desperate for a trade deal with the US. The comments were made by the party's foreign affairs spokesman, Shukra Muna, who also said they were the only party who could prevent a Conservative majority. It is Trump, perhaps more than any other, who has taken this politics mainstream in the Western world. In his words and deeds, he has been unafraid to engage in bigoted, racist, sexist and Islamophobic behaviour, to lie and to break the law. All the same criticisms apply to the UK's Prime Minister, who is following the Trump playbook 
and has become part of this global network of populist, right-wing, authoritarian nationalists. Well, uh, joining me now are the former Conservative Culture Minister, Ed Vasey, who had the whip removed in September this year for rebelling against the government on Brexit. He subsequently had the whip restored, but is standing down anyway. Also with me are the former Labour MP, Gisela Stewart, who campaigned for Brexit, and the former Conservative and more recently Lib Dem MP, Heidi Allen, who left the Tories over Brexit. Um, so they're all sort of escapees from politics. Um, <laughs> it's so a great going escape. To therapy yeah. at the moment. So we've had the sort of the main manifestos from La Labour, Liberal Democrats and the, and the Conservatives. So how do you think they are landing? I mean, you know, Labour, huge message, huge change. Conservatives basically trying to say as little as possible, Ed. Yeah, I think uh, Labour's is very transactional. So free broadband was the one that hit me between the eyes because I used to be the broadband minister. There's now this uh, WASPy compensation. You can go on the website. Apparently, somebody like Theresa May, for example, as a WASPy woman, will get £20,000 from the Labour Party. So it's pretty transactional. Uh, the question is, will the public believe that? And I think the Conservatives are quite rightly being reasonably cautious because they have been burned by the lesson of the 2017 election and is a safety-first manifesto, but uh, no worse for that. Because it's hard to attack the individual suggestions, so you have to attack whether you believe they can deliver. Well, I think, I mean, the trouble with this election is this, that I think we are playing out a traditional playbook, which always happens, is can, can these policies be afforded, are they realistic? Fundamentally, it comes down to, is the public fed up with a hung parliament? Are they going to try and deliver a majority party? And who's going to be in charge of that? Um, Gisela Stewart, I mean, is this turning into the Brexit election, or, or is it not going to Boris Johnson's plan? I think it is turning into the Brexit election. I mean, I've been uh, actually abroad for three days. I've been over to Germany, and on the way back, I suddenly thought, what are the bits I can remember? What are the bits which I was on the doorstep? And I thought, well, with Labour, it's all a bit sepia. You know, it sort of all reminds me of 1983, of, you know... That what, 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 whatever, the, <laughs> whatever the question, the state's clearly is the answer. And I think the IFS costed it, that for every pound of a Tory uh, promise, Labour costed 28. Yeah. Uh, with, but do you think it matters Tories. whether it's believable? I mean, is, 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 the, is the idea of the Labour manifesto just to cause mayhem <laughs> rather than to be necessarily believable? No, I don't. I mean, if, 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 if you want to be the next government, which I think the, the, the opposition party ought to go into an election being so, you need to have some notion of what you think the society is going to look like. And, you know, the, the voters have any expectations, but at the moment, I, I sort of get the, the, the sort of sense as if they're not. And the other thing which strikes me, you know, is that the Lib Dems know all the things they're against. And the response to the manifestos is that if the Tories are promising something, it's seen as a, as a lie. Whereas if Labour is promising something, they're just going to say, well, it's never going to be delivered anyway, so, you know, might as well take it. Heidi Allen, it's not really going that well for the Liberal Democrats, is it, in truth? I mean, the, poll, the polls are showing squeeze. You know, Joe Swinson was the new character, you know, who had everything to sort of prove against these two men we knew very well. And it's not really working. Well, the, the, the polls will shift right the way through the piece. Um, and I think the other thing to remember is that national polls don't always necessarily reflect what's happening on the ground in target seats. So, for example, you'll know the Unite to Remain initiative that I launched, which has 60 seats across England and Wales, where the Lib Dems, Plaid Cymru and the Greens aren't standing against each other. In those seats, it's a very, very different picture indeed, because it's about strategically choosing seats where it is going to be possible to win. So I think the Lib Dems could do, do significantly better than the national polls would suggest. I mean, you want people to vote tactically. I mean, do you think... What, what's going on with tactical voting? You know, do you think people... Because some people are sort of really criticising and saying it's bad faith politics, it doesn't work, and people are very confused about how to do it. Tony Blair today out there saying vote yeah, tactically. Absolutely, because as, as you were saying, Gisela, this is a Brexit election, there is no doubt. This isn't about 50,000 nurses or what we're going to do for WASPy pensions. This is about Brexit. So people will lend their votes on this one opportunity to change the direction we're on. Because but if it's Boris not Johnson, about Brexit, why is Labour going up? I mean, Labour's doing very well in an ICM poll tonight, 34%. Well, probably because things like the WASP, it's, it's, it sounds good and it's a vote winner, isn't it? But ultimately, what it will come down to is whether or not we can stop Boris Johnson from delivering. One year is not enough a transition period to get a deal. That is a no-deal Brexit we're still looking at, and people can stop that by voting tactically. Do you, do you think people are going to vote tactically this time? Well, I thought the Lib Dems would be doing better, and uh, I think that this is a replay, minus the Theresa May debacle of the 2017 election, where basically the two main parties are the choice. Where I think it is different is... It, it, I, don't, I don't call it a Brexit election, but I do think the slogan, get Brexit done, works. It's so it's, for me, it's a 
can we have a government Even though it's with a majority? Yeah. And we almost, <laughs> <laughs> we almost don't care what that government will do. We just want one with a majority. I'm a Tory, so I believe that most people would, would prefer to have Boris Johnson as Prime Minister, and he will come back with a majority. But it may be that Labour is rising because people are thinking, I want a majority, and those that don't want Boris Johnson to be Prime Minister have decided to go in with Labour. But it doesn't feel to me like a tactical election, although I accept what Heidi says, that there may be stuff happening in individual constituencies which will surprise us on the night. Absolutely. You see, what struck me is that, you know, apart from the Labour Party's choice of, of venue, which was brilliant, they went to Birmingham City University, which I fully approve of, uh, but I sort of looked at the manifestos and there were lots of stuff in the Tory manifesto which could have been very well in a Blairite oh, yeah. uh, a manifesto. Well, I mean, that's always my defence of they're, they're kind of mat these, these things matter because whoever wins, that's what the civil servants are going to work to. That's what they're preparing for. So I just think you have, on the one hand, a, confu not, not a, a sort of shifting of what the Tories stand for and what Labour stands for, and yet for some people the most important thing will be delivering the, do, the Brexit manifesto. Do you manifesto. think Labour... I mean, I know you're... You're obviously a Brexiteer, but Labour's party position is not pro-Brexit. It tries to straddle both sides. But are they failing to land a blow on get Brexit done? You know, by constantly going... By refusing to accept it as a Brexit uh, election, they are failing to expose what's clearly untrue about get Brexit done. That's well, <laughs> but, but you want to get... Well, Krishna, I would challenge you. You say what is clearly untrue. Oh, no, we're no, not no. going to get if, Brexit if, done if by January. January. We're now going to have a debate about Brexit. No, you've no, slipped no, up no, terribly. No, no. We're going to disappear if, down if, the if, rabbit hole. But even Ed doesn't think agreement. get are, Brexit done is more, true, do you? I mean, I'm, talk, I'm talking electoral <laughs> tactics. No, but, but I, I thought the most important thing on the leadership debates when you when you had this is that. Uh, that Jeremy Corbyn refused to answer which side he would take on, kind of on, on, the, that, on the next I mean, one. Seriously. And I think that probably was the most successful outcome from Boris Johnson. But that, that, that is the key point, I think, that Labour voters who are thinking about voting Tory, who could have been won back by Labour, now think that their own party will not fulfil the referendum result. Whether or not you think it is the right thing to fulfil it, I think Labour have lost that opportunity to win back those voters. But, that is my well, instinct. But those voters will potentially come both ways, I think, depending on um, whether they remain or Brexit supporting. Um, you know, Jeremy Corbyn cannot continue to sit on the fence without it coming unstuck at some point. And that's where we're going to see big votes, I think, coming in the Liberal Democrat direction. Which is why and I thought they would do better. Well, what about because Tory they go. Remainers, though? I mean, what, why aren't more Tory Remainers going to the Liberal Democrats? But, well, I, I think they are. If you talk to voters in, in my old constituency, South Cambridge, I obviously still talk to people, they are incensed as to what the Tory party... But we saw become. the Liberal Democrat ambition shrink this week, didn't we? When, when Jo Swinson sort of accepted that she's not going to be Prime Minister. No, I didn't. This is about her role in whichever minority government for my, might emerge. For my view, it's all, I don't think anything's changed. I think it's always been about that. No party can leap from a small number of MPs to governing. But can it hold the balance of power? Absolutely. And with neither Jeremy Corbyn nor Boris Johnson, I think um, there could be... You know, the coalition last time wasn't so bad, mm. but clearly not with the existing But it's leaders. people like you, um, Ed Vase, isn't it? I mean, like, you fundamentally disagree with Boris Johnson on Brexit, but you want to back him mm. to be Prime Minister. Uh, so well, I don't, I don't want to do a geezer and start debating Brexit. I mean, I did vote for his deal. No, but what I mean is people li like you who are sort of regard themselves... The people like David Gork's dad, no, no, who I was thought, on Twitter today saying, I, middle of the road, this, Tory... This is, this is the point I'm making. I, I thought at the beginning of this campaign there would be a lot of Remainer Tories who would go to the Liberal Democrats. That does not seem to be happening. And yes. I think that is because... Yeah, what, yeah. I think... It's just a hunch, but my thing is the sort of collective wisdom is we want a majority government, and if you're a Tory, of course some Remainer Tories will go to the Liberal Democrats, but if you're a Tory, you think, actually, I would much prefer to be Boris Johnson than Jeremy Corbyn, and I'd much prefer to have a majority government than another Hung Parliament. can make a difference in the seats. In a, in a Tory Labour margin, I agree, Tory voters will be scared of letting Corbyn in, but in seats like mine, Labour... Uh, forgive me, uh, Tory Lib Dem, there's a no-brainer. Those votes are coming to the Lib So Dem. does Labour need to do any work on addressing what some people have a, a fear of Jeremy Corbyn? Or do they just write them off and say, we don't care about the people who are scared of Jeremy Corbyn, we want the people who think he's a radical change, who will change the country? Well, I think a Labour Party that wants to form the next government would, will have to address that. But, but a Labour Party... What, to address which, the fear? Yeah, to address that fear. That but, but, Corbyn, but, but I get that kind of sense of that there's a part of, of, of people around Jeremy Corbyn who just wanted to be their party, mm, you know, exactly. and, and, and implement a, a long-held list yeah, yeah. Of, of things they've always wanted to do, totally weren't right. able to do when, when, when we had three, you know, under the Blair government, and they now, now don't think about whether they get a majority or not, they just want to put... That, their stamp on the party. Is it still and your party? Is no, it... I find it's a party which I find really difficult to Because Kate Hoey said, you know, the party has left. 
her. It's, it's, Do you it's, think it's left you as well? It's, it's one I find exceptionally difficult to, to recognise. And, and I think the big outcome of this, two, of, of this general election will be that the party labels will still be there, but the kind of people who represent the thinking both on the Tory side and on, on, on the Labour side is changing completely. Correct. Just very briefly, Ed, um, we're doing a debate here on Thursday about yeah. climate change. Do you want me to come? Um, well, yeah, I'd love you to come and watch, okay. but we'd like Boris Johnson to come. Do you think he should come? Well, I think there's a danger in this election, to a certain extent, that the media becomes quite navel-gazing, so there's been a lot about, you know, changing the Twitter handle when you come on our programme. I don't think you should fret about it, Christian. I think you should get on and, and do your job on analysing the climate change policies and don't worry whether Boris will come or not. Don't take, you don't take it personally. I mean, all these spin doctors, they play no, all their games. It's just the man that's been the Prime Minister and thinks they play he's, all these he's got enough of an opinion to run the country. We'll leave it there. Thank you all very much indeed. <laughs>